So there comes the time, you see, when the student can go in front of the master and not give a damn. Because he sees, he, he's seen the point. There wasn't a problem. He made up the problem himself. He came and projected it on this master who knew how to handle that kind of person by making him much more stupid than he was before. <laughs> Until he sees the essential stupidity of the human situation where we are playing a game of one-upmanship on other people and on the universe. How to get the better of life? Well, what makes you think you're separate from life so that you can get the better of it? How can you beat the game? What game? Or who will beat it? This illusion of beating the game, of finding the thing out, of catching it by the tail, is therefore dissipated by the technique of the koan. It's called, working on a koan is like a mosquito biting an iron bull. It's the nature of the mosquito to bite. It's the nature of an iron bull to be unbitten. <laughs> or they say it's like swallowing a ball of molten lead. You can't swallow it down. You can't cough it up. You can't get rid of this thing. That's the great doubt, you see. But if this is an exaggerated form of what everybody is ordinarily trying to do to beat the game. So at that moment, the student has heard the sound of one hand or discovered who he was before father and mother conceived him or what no means. So the teacher says, good. Now, you have found the frontier gate to Zen. You've put your foot in at the door, and you're across the threshold. But there's a long way to go. And now you have found this priceless thing out, you must redouble your efforts. So he gives him another koan. Now the student may be able to answer that one instantly. Because it's simply a test koan. See, there are five classes of koans. The first class is what you call the Hinayana koans, and the other four are the Mahayana koans. Hinayana is to reach nirvana. Mahayana is to come back and bring nirvana into the world as a bodhisattva. So once you get the great void, you see, there's nothing to catch on to. You are the universe. It doesn't matter whether you live or die. That's nirvana. All clinging to life, everything like that, you see then that it's hopeless. And you give it up, because not because you, 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 know, you think you ought to give it up, because you know there is no way of, of catching it. There's nothing to catch hold of. There's no safety in the cosmos. So you just have to, to give up. Then, the next class of koans are such things as asking for miracles. In that class comes, take the four divisions of Tokyo out of your sleeve. Or uh, stop the booming of a distant bell. Blow out a candle in uh, Timbuktu. <laughs> but as they go on in various ways, they are concerned with all kinds of problems and how uh, Zen understanding deals with those problems until we get in the end to the study of morality and rules of social and monastic life. That's the last thing. And the Zen way of understanding it. Now, this, may, this takes very, very differing periods of time. Some people get through in as little as 10 years, the whole thing. There is a very brilliant Westerner by the name of Walter Novick who has just about completed the whole thing. 
and uh, he's a musician and a pianist and he'll come back to this country as the first accredited Zen master of the West and uh, he'll set up his little uh, sodo on a farm and wait and see what happens. The day of graduation comes and then everybody turns out and there's a great hullabaloo and uh, they salute the departing monk and uh, he goes out he may just become a layman as I said or become a temple priest or he may be himself a Roshi. Uh, 